Welcome back, everyone, to episode seven of Pawns and Patrons. Our pawns are all currently sound asleep, dreaming the night away in uh, Phyllis's very comfortable, cozy mud hut. It's got a couple of different rooms and, you know, kitchen and fireplace and, you know, really very homey. Uh, uh, it has a number of really lovely uh, frog potterware mugs that she hands out soup in. I did want to um, mention that Evelyn would stay awake for watch if no one else would, but okay. I don't. I don't she's know if like everyone's asleep. Open. Yeah, she's kind of just imagining herself on standard watch, but making sure that no one's like all asleep at once. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh yes, Treasure. Um, Treasure's gonna talk to the OGs that has been on the adventure with him. So I guess that's Babs. And are there other? Babs, Sky, Agnes, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think it, Stretch is gonna gather the ones that he knows most. And then he's gonna say, guys, I have to let you in on the secret. Yeah? Phyllis, Phyllis got bribed by the knights, right? Yeah? With a massive red jewel. Oh. Uh. Mm. Agnes and, and Senga look at each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like a big mm -hmm. jewel, yeah. Mm -hmm. Big red jewel worth probably a lot of money. Yeah, that would do it. That would be a good bribe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would like that jewel, Agnes whispers. <laughs> I would like that jewel too. There's a jewel of bribery. She couldn't even report it to anybody. Yes, and it was taken under ill intent if it was against the Dudes, Agnes. Exactly. The knights have been chasing the Dudes and not Augusta Ribe at all. <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> so, should we go look through? Her things? Well, no, she's like our host. That'd be like wrong. Yes, we should just ask her for it. If she's a yeah. good host, she would give it perhaps. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if anyone's that good of a host. <laughs> she did lie to us. She does kind of owe us, you're right. In a way. All right, no, never mind, Sky. Go back to bed. <laughs> yes, let's all forget about the gem. We, we okay. won't do that. We Good won't night, do that. See Good you night. later. Sky will go back to bed. So. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing what I'm thinking we're doing? <laughs> Depends on how on board Senga is. I think she might have the best opportunity to snoop around a little bit. Very valid. Is it all like a is it like a one room hut? Like is Phyllis on the other side, just like one eye open watching us? Like <laughs> So um it's quite large. It is multi-roomed. Um, like the inner walls are built out of like, you know, clearly there's some sort of like um wooden framework, probably those same flexible rods cut from trees outside of the village, like woven into a framework and then plastered with mud that dries under the sun. Um so there are uh interior walls that are built out of that same structure. Um, Y'all are all sleeping in an upstairs portion, sort of like a loft. It's not exposed to the downstairs. It, it, she was probably using it as an attic, like she had to move like trunks and chests and stuff. Like by now, you've definitely like poked through them and been like, ah, ancient moth-eaten linens. Ah, a box of mud. You know, like whatever. Um, so y'all, y'all are speaking privately. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think there's like four rooms, if you imagine, right? There's like a nice, uh, homey sort of sitting chamber that's right at the entrance of the of the of the hut, and then like immediately to the right, there's like a kitchen, and then immediately to the left, there's like a bedroom, and then there's a, you know, a wooden ladder upstairs to the the loft area where you're all, you know, hunkered down. Hmm. Cool. So we can talk under expectations of privacy, and we yeah. kind of would make a lot of noise if we were going to go poking around. Uh, what Agnes would like to suggest is uh, we're thinking about this big barrel of spices that we have. It's going to be very unwieldy to carry that into the swamp. And 
highly likely to break and spill its contents and, and thus become completely unvaluable. Perhaps we can back her into a trade agreement because we are going to have to bring those flowers back here and get passage through this city again. So we don't want to make ourselves criminals. Mm -hmm. but Very good point. So we get the gem when we come back. Okay, noted. Huh? <laughs> we should make That's her be holding to us. <laughs> if you want to give her the battle, no problem. I think we should not mention the gem, though. What, You're what right. Does, we should get what does Babs think about this plan? I didn't know Babs was invited, is she? Yeah, 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 you are. Oh, okay. OG. It, it was an OG meeting. Oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Minus Sky, because Sky somehow is too nice. <laughs> Babs is um, all for the idea of um, Senga? That's her name, right? Mm -hmm. Of Senga being like the scout. She thinks that's great. It has Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 vibes. <laughs> So I, I think, though, that um, Rachel marked a point. We should do it when we go back. <laughs> Not when we're going to have to come back here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I guess we're not doing it tonight. Okay. Uh, Stretch is kind of paranoid, so Stretch is going to, like, hide in the room. <laughs> Sure. You you open a chest and pull out some of the ancient linens and crawl yeah. into the chest and then like yeah. pull it closed so it's just like yeah excellent. Very very shortly thereafter, there are uh, the sound of soft snores emanating from a chest. <laughs> um, Evelyn, you said you were staying up and and keeping watch. Here yeah. in this in this house, where the door is locked, there's like the soft snoring of a little old lady from downstairs. Oh yeah, she's freaking out. She's got like her ear to the ground, and she's like <laughs> counting like thunder and lightning the snores. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you you hear you hear her mutter. You put that down, Edith. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> He like scratches Edith into the dust and a question mark and then just keeps listening. Hmm, <laughs> um, butter my biscuits. <laughs> yeah, uh, all of this is, Evelyn is just coding everything terror here. She's in the enemy's territory. Everyone else is asleep, perhaps under a spell of calm. She's not quite sure, but she has not adventured out and uh, she has one hit point, which is what she's mostly conscious of. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's very carefully safeguarding her one HP or whatever. Yeah. Okay, awesome. As you sit late into the night in your in the depths of your paranoia, the snoring drones on until like your your sleep addled mind starts hearing the sound of like jangling coins in the snores like she's sleeping on top of this gemstone and it's worth so much money and <laughs> chink, 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 chink. and then all of a sudden your your mind snaps awake and you are actually hearing the sound of the soft jangling of coins from somewhere nearby <gasps> They are coming to get me. They knew. They know I am the today. You're asleep. <laughs> okay. I think it's in my sleep. I probably say that in my sleep at yeah. this point. Like they know. <laughs> it's just feeding Evelyn's paranoia. <laughs> right, they are. Um, do the? It just sounds like like somebody rolling over on a bag of coins, or does it sound like somebody taking steps and the coins jingling? It sounds like a heavy coin purse jangling at someone's hip. Someone's coming. Someone's, 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 someone's coming. It has to be. Someone's going to kill us. Somebody got paid to kill us. Somebody. And she's like, she's got her ear to the ground, but she's like reaching out with her foot, just like kicking whoever she can like wake up and go, like, they're coming. Guys, they're coming. Somebody's coming. Hmm? Somebody's coming. This, room coming. Is, this room is small. You've now successfully kicked like eight people in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who wants to wake up can, can be awake. Mm -hmm. Babs will be awake. Yeah. yeah. And Scribbles. Scribbles will immediately, like, Scribbles has their paper at, on their chest and just wakes 
Ready to write. <laughs> Ready to record. <laughs> I think I think Vestry doesn't wake up, Lord Drew either. I think I think Stretch wakes up and he's like, they're coming. <laughs> Henley was already awake in the corner going. <laughs> 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 yeah, that definitely wasn't freaking Evelyn out at all. <laughs> Sky will wake up, so will D and Kate. I think that's I guess everyone. like uh no, Vast is like they do. Hmm? What, what, what do we do? What, who, who's coming? What do we do? Why do we care? What? What's going on? I, I hear somebody coming. I hear somebody with money coming. I, somebody, somebody's coming up the... And uh, she... Is, is it like a stairway where like... Is it a trap door or is it just kind of a hole in the floor? It's a it's a trap door uh, with a ladder. Hmm. Okay. Uh, is there a window to this building? No. Where we are? Not, not in this room. <gasps> This guy gets up. No escape. This guy gets up. <laughs> says that don't worry about this. I got it. And uh, we'll head down the ladder and go out the front door. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, are you trying to be quiet, Sky? No. Okay. You're just heading I mean, down. Relatively. I'm not trying to like wake people up at night. I'm doing the like normal. Don't want to wake my neighbors quiet, but not the like I'm a rogue about to steal everyone's money quiet. I'm doing uh, the are, stumbling to the bathroom you? at 4 a.m. quiet. Are you trying to avoid waking up your host? Yeah, totally. That'd be All right, rude. cool. Uh, let's see. Give me one d ten plus your agility. Uh, wait a minute. Hang on. And Sky does not have any armor. We've already established this. Yeah, one d ten plus your agility modifier. Uh, all right. D ten plus zero. Nine. Yeah, okay, so you, you, you climb down the ladder, head outside, open the door, you're standing there in the cold, and somewhere faint in the darkness, you hear this, ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. I will wander in that direction, looking for a bush. Suddenly from behind you, you hear a sound that startles you as a hand falls on your shoulder. <gasps> it's Phyllis. She says, Oh, Sky, what are you doing? Uh, is, any, is something the matter? I know the room is a little tight, but it's the best that I have. If, if one of you needs, you could sleep down here in the common area. I was just gonna leak some water. You know what I mean? Oh, yes, well, well you can do that anywhere outside of the town. Just go in the swamps. Yeah, yeah, I was just, you know, sorry to wake you. Just trying to be quiet. Oh, no worries. Just Phil, wait, I thought you were... Hostess. What are you doing outside? I was trying to be careful so as not to wake you. Oh, I heard you climbing down the ladder. Oh, well, I didn't even hear you get up or follow me outside at all. That's amazing. Ah, these old bones are spry, especially after that double-length soak this afternoon. Oh, totally, totally. Well, good night, Phyllis. Sorry to wake you. And I will you listen. Guys, back do you guys know that my grandma's name is Phyllis? Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> this. Fantastic. Uh, I will listen again for the jingling and walk in that direction. Hmm. Hmm. You hear it. It's very faint. What's your background, Sky? You're a warrior these days. But I'm a navigator. You, you know, I'm used to listening to the sound of the sea to determine my location. So I don't know that you've navigated <laughs> by sound, but I like that you're a navigator, which means you're like good at finding your way. And also like you've spent a lot of time on boats, which means that you've grown accustomed to hearing the sound of the rigging and like what that means for like what problems might be happening. See, that's what I was saying. You know, I'm not na navigating by the sound of the ocean, but knowing what to do with the boat by the way. It See, you know what's happening, Stephen. You've got, you've got a little bit more yeah. keen of an ear than let's say uh, a beer brewer yeah. <laughs> might have yeah, for argument's sake. Uh, I like this a lot. Uh, give me a D16 
uh, plus your luck. Or actually, rather, um, the hexagon on your character sheet that says action die. Yeah. Change, click that and change it to D16, and then give me a luck roll. A 19? How's that possible? My action die is a 16. Uh, wow, what? All right, I guess the action die doesn't actually change. But I mean, two 19s has got to count for something. Roll. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just roll a d16 plus zero. But the 19. <laughs> the 19 just rolled over and it became like a five. Terrible. Oh, wait a minute. Is this, Kate, is this Kate who's doing this? It is the wrong character sheet. I am. Yeah. We <laughs> can just modify that by zero because they both have zero. Right, of course, because it's, yeah, yeah uh, sure. Yeah, so um, the sound seems like it's coming from all over the place. And as you wander out through the town, like it's clear that it's coming from outside in the swamps. But by the time you get out in the swamps, it's quite faint indeed. Okay, well, I will do what I came here to do. Um, and then, you know, give a pause in a moment to see if maybe I can relocate after finishing my business. Is, uh, and... is everybody else staying inside? Uh, when Sky went down the ladder, Evelyn kind of, like, stuck her head through and was watching, so, um, she would have been, I think, watching the hallway when he left and is still listening for the jingle sound, too. Yeah, so... You stuck your head down, you watched him go out the door, you saw Phyllis come out of her bedroom and go begin a conversation with Sky outside. Scribbles is also awake, just trying to record everything. Babs went back to sleep. <laughs> go Babs. I can relate. Yeah, okay. Um, if nothing else goes on, then yeah. Um, Sky, you're able to make it back to the crew and uh, nothing else untoward occurs. Of course, yeah. Phyllis goes back into her bedroom, closes the door. You hear the little click of the latch when she's yeah. closed the door. I just want to make a, a mental note of where I went so that way we can kind of walk by it in the morning, maybe pick up sure. some clues. Uh, as a navigator, you're very familiar with like finding appropriate landmarks. You could definitely find your way back to where you were. Excellent. Yep, okay. Um, the night passes beyond that, uneventfully. Okay. Uh, I guess I do so relate to So real quick, the... um, two things. First, out of character, I thought it might be helpful to just talk about like what our immediate objective is today, just so that we can like agree and figure out like what do we want to go do. And then second, uh, I owe a number of you experience points, mm -hmm. which I put in the Discord. But uh, it's been it's been a month, so let's take a look at this. Um, all level one characters earned three experience points last session. Ooh. One for ch surviving facing down the Chunder Brothers, and two for for, sur for surviving battling against the Swamp Crocodiles. Where do we put that? So uh, an there XP is next to level. When you're oh. And I've got it. But is it just for the level one characters? It's just for the level one characters. The level zero characters don't gain XP through this yeah. normal method. They're going to get 10 when they survive an adventure. Okay. And then so they'll would... start recording. Okay. So okay. I think that that's. Uh, Agnes, Sky, Babs, and Stretch. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, out of character, what do y'all want to take care of today? I thought we were going to house today. Mm hmm I definitely want to know the story lessons. of Duday. Mm hmm It is, right now, the, the primary narrative of our campaign, in my opinion. Yes, and why did they stop worshiping Duday 40 years hence? And can we get them to start again? Bobogby Bills, aha, you're right. That's mm -hmm. true. We should get them to worship Bobogby Bills again. The relationship between Bobogby Bills and the Dudays seems to have some sort of connections that I don't quite understand yet, and I would like to get to the bottom of those. Mm. But also we're supposed to find the wizard lady. I know that's our main storyline, but like, we can do that last, right? 
Or we can do it while we're figuring out the other guys. Yeah. That's the storyline we're being taxed on, so I have to say I'm less incentivized. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right. Then I guess we're going to us today. Awesome. Cool. So uh, Dawn comes early with rosy fingers, and um, uh, uh, Phyllis treats you all to a breakfast of eggs and bacon, and then... Uh, swiftly ushers you out the door, sees you well fed and watered, uh, you know, provides you like a, a water skin so that you have something to, you know, keep you going through the swamps, and points you to the north and then uh, uh, exhorts you to head to the west and uh, sends you forth. Are either of those in the direction that I was last night? Um, so, when she sends you north out of town, that's like following the um, the road mm -hmm. uh, opposite from the way that you entered town and mm -hmm. continuing on north, you did not go out of town by the road last night. You actually like headed around behind Phyllis's hut and then like off a ways into the swamps um, past one particularly gnarled bush that in the darkness looked like a gorgon to you. Okay, was that east or west? It was west. Okay, so we came south, from south, we are sort of headed northwest, and I went west last night. Yep. Cool, so I will, you know, lead the party to where I was last night, under mm -hmm. pretenses if anyone asks us, and uh, point around the area and be like, this is where I heard the jingling. Mm. Let's look for Do, clues. Um Daphne, Henley, come with me. Henley is a chicken butcher. So I will make the argument that Henley often has to track things that are running away. <laughs> <laughs> so Henley, I, I imagine Henley getting on all fours and like, <laughs> just like finding tracks if there are any to try to follow whatever creature was here. So as a chicken butcher, Henley also raised the chickens. No, like Henley comes to work. Okay. There's a pen of chickens. Yeah. Places to hide. Yeah. Henley has to go get one, bring it inside to butcher. So like, you know, you butcher the first 10 really dumb ones. And then there's going to be three really smart ones that are like finding places to hide, running away from you. You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah, which is probably painful escaping for me to talk the about pen, as a and then you have to track them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Pointing I, I at like... their peers and like, take this one. Uh -huh. I like that we have learned that Henley butchers 13 chickens a day, specifically. Um, <laughs> it's very unlucky. And, and I allow this in full. So go ahead. Uh, and let's, let's take a look at Henley's character sheet here. Um... Give me a, a full d20 plus your intelligence modifier. So plus zero, but yeah, okay. Um, Henley, you know that the, the muds and waters of this swamp just sort of like absorb any any kind of, of, of lone footprints that go in them. Someone sticks their foot in the mud and it sinks straight in. And then when they pull it up, the water floods in. You just, you can never tell anything. Henley, you don't expect to be able to see an elephant walking through here, much less a chicken. And yet, after a few minutes of circling the area that, that uh, Sky led you to, there you see it, a soft, like, muddy footprint on uh, like a, a mossy log. And then from there, you're able to like look carefully at an angle at the water and like see the the like indentations in under the water to see where this where these tracks lead. And you're able to find the path of a frog walking through the swamp. Uh, Henley, upon finding this, will kind of stand up and be like, Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is it? Fuck. Uh, Fiona's gonna come over and she's got a background of a, a forester, so she's just gonna verify and sort of translate this situation and be like, oh, 
the the guy found some frog tracks. Nice job, Henley. And she's going to slap him on the back. Like, good nice. stuff. Yeah, give me a d20 plus your intelligence. Uh, who Who is that? That's Fiona. Uh, yeah, Fiona. Folks. D20 plus inch. She's with minus one. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's not good. So what 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 this says to me is that uh it it's Fiona learning from uh uh Henley here. Uh Henley has maybe a little more experience in uh non-forest specific environments. And so uh yeah, it, it it's Henley pointing out the tracks and and Fiona going, "Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. I I would not have seen that." Yes, you find you find a, a cluster of tracks heading heading off and away into the swamp. Are those we... kid, those chicken pens can get real swampy. It makes sense. <laughs> are we following the tracks? Yeah. Okay. I mean, are there more tracks to follow? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, who whoever was the doing way. this was quite bad at hiding their tracks. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, you, you, you make your way along this track through the swamp, you know, uh, you know, uh, up and over fallen logs and like wading through waist deep pools from time to time. Um, Henley, give me a luck roll. Come on, Henley. No. Oh, good. Right. It's supposed to be low. So this isn't, um, <laughs> we should really like standardize this. It's supposed to be lower than my luck, right? Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> Isn't that, I, may, am I remembering it wrong? No, you, you, absolutely, we have occasionally asked for people to roll under their scores. Oh, okay. Um, I'll have to go back to the book and, like, look at, look at when it advises which method of, of judging, uh, but this is great. The trick here, of course, is that if you have a negative luck, it makes it easier to get a higher, like a successful luck score. Mm. Uh, if we if we judge by that method, um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, Henley is feeling lucky today, and so um, I think you like see a pair of crocodiles sunning themselves on some fallen logs and steer the group wide, but still keeping an eye on like where the path through the swamp leads. Um, so you, you you steer the path, the, steer the group wide, avoiding the crocodiles, but re-intersecting with the path of the trail through the swamp. And after about five minutes of travel, um, you come to You come to a spot where the path ends and there's like a couple of like back and forth like trails of these footprints and then they just like head back the way that they came. Hmm. There's um it's like right between two trees that are sort of leaning towards each other. Like that. And then sort of out ahead there's like a um a swampy marshy bit where it's like you have to wade up to your waist and out in the middle of it there's a big rock that's sort of like has an overhang it's thrust up out of the water henley will start um investigating the water to make mm -hmm. sure it's safe because yeah. henley has their eyes focused on the rock because they think that this person they're tracking probably went there and hid something and then left I'm going to investigate the trees. Stretch and Lurjui. Lurjui okay. is like once again taking out the pole arm and like poking things and like Stretch like really like what do you even think you're doing here? And then he starts touching the tree trying to see if there's like a hidden little thing. Henley, how are you verifying the safety of the water? Mm, I'm going to like check first just to see if I can see any threats, likely crocodile um, hiding spots. And then I'm also gonna gonna take just a little a little tiny bit of chicken meat from my pouch, kind of mm -hmm. just toss it into the middle of the water and see if anything comes to get it. Yeah. 
Um, one thing that you notice is that the water here is a lot murkier and muddier than you're used to. Um, it's really hard to see through. It looks, you know, like uh, either churned up or or just like so stagnant that all of the the silt and sediment like rises up off the bottom or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's hard to see into, but when you toss the like chicken chunks into the water, nothing comes snapping up. Um, I think like you see the kinds of little ripples on the surface of the water that indicate like small fish sort of like coalescing around this, mm -hmm. this morsel that's drifting down through the layers of muck. Um, so all in all, like it, it looks it looks safe to your eyes in that there's there's no giant tadpoles, there's no crocodiles. All right, Henley is gonna make their way toward the rock. Okay. Um, meanwhile, was it Stredge with the polearm? No, oh, it was the other, um, uh, Lurjui. Lurjui, yes. bought all yes. the equipment, the expensive equipment first. Yes, of course, because they sold their stuff. Um, Lurjui, you, you start inspecting one of the trees and, and there's, you know, nothing strange. You poke it with your, your pole arm and it, it's a tree. It behaves much like a tree when poked with a pole arm. You go to the other one and you start poking it with your pole arm and um, something moves, almost like a snake coiling back. And then you realize that you've you've cut through a rope that was wrapped around the tree that was uh -oh. so soaked in, in water and mud that it looked kind of like a snake when you poked it. Um, so you reach out and you manage to grab it and this rope was tied around the tree and trails off into the water. Dive for the other end! Dive for the other end! <laughs> Dive for the other end! Uh, now, of, of course, it's Henley who's, who's sort of in the water adjacent to the rope. And... Um, yeah, you, you... Uh, Lurge Lurge screams out, I found that first. <laughs> Henley, you're, you're able to grab the rope and like use it to find your way forwards. It leads right under this overhang of the rock, and then you you can like reach down in there with your hands and feel around. Now, um, as you proceed, you notice that like the water around you is just sort of simmering just a little bit. Uh oh. What do you do? Uh... I'm, uh, I'm gonna take note of where I was with the rope, but scramble on top of the rock to safety, <laughs> to just like make sure of what's happening. Okay, you scramble up onto the rock. Give me an agility test. So roll, roll your agility. Higher is better. Nice. Cool, awesome. No problem. Um, you get up on top of the rock easily, and as you pull your leg up, something leaps up out of the water, aiming for your leg. <gasps> oh, oh, wow, okay. So Henley, I'm pretty sure that your uh, your AC is not 17. Nope. Um, a finger long silver and black leech <gasps> leaps up out of the water. A and leaping just, leech? Just Thock sticks itself onto your leg. You barely even feel it. It just feels like a like a, a clump of mud, sort of like slapping Ooh, onto your leg. Ah, ah, ah. Yuck! That's so how it works. <laughs> it reminds me of when we played the Starfinder, and Anna always got the yes. gross things. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Enly, you take one damage. <gasps> Can I freak out and rip it off my leg? Absolutely. I yeah, do. Oh, it's it's easy to grab. It just takes your full attention because it's like slippery and gross. Wow. You manage to reach down, grab it, pull it off your leg. What do you do with it then? Like, it's one of those things where you don't think you're just like away from me. So it's just rip throw. Yeah, awesome, cool. Yeah, you just huck it. It goes spinning like a boomerang uh -huh. out into the water. It's splash. Yes. Cool, the water below the rock is just sort of Simmering. Uh, pretty is, gross. Is that the only like above water area? Are there like little humps of like dry land or you know not water? So, looking at the the rope and where it's heading, so like these two trees sort of like they almost make an X, like crossing over each other, and that's like the path that you follow and leads between those two trees. And then there's sort of a circular, 
you know, it's all a swamp, so it's all muddy, it's all vaguely land and vaguely water, but this is clearly a circular pool of deeper water, waist deep, with this thrusting rock out in the middle of it. Um, and all around the rock, the water is just simmering a little bit. But are we able to get, like, out of the water, like, uh... Like yeah, th those on... are those of you who are between the trees are are still out of the water. You're standing okay. on muddy muddy ground. Yeah, I'm thinking of Valheim leeches, so they can't like get us then, right? No. no. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're I'm watching. I'll, Fiona and uh, uh, Evelyn and uh, Agnes are all just kind of watching and Um, I guess Lurge grabs the rope and tries pulling gently. Okay. Cool. Um, gently pulling on the rope, you feel a little bit of resistance as of something he heavy dragging along the bottom of the water. Henley until is like, finally, <laughs> just like finally, drawing this away from Henley, who's standing on the rock now. Yeah, just like, what? You you pull up a muddy and waterlogged sack, and because it's completely Ooh. soaked and quite heavy, you can very clearly see the outline of number of gold coins through <gasps> the cloth. Uh, Lurdry says, that's mine! I found yeah. it! <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, I let us here? Henley is having a temper. Uh, <laughs> Strange to do is like, I let us here first. Uh, Listen, I this found is it a group last night. effort. <laughs> that's true. Uh, so I guess Lurdry just opens up the Thing to see what's in it. Yeah. Um, a moment's counting ascertains that there's a very convenient 120 gold coins mm. in this bag. And we're 12? And you are 12. Well, Lurgewee is like, you know my what my mama always said, finders keepers. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, be a good team player. We're all in this together. Come on, you know the right thing to do. Stretch is like, yeah, sure. That's exactly what happened last time. The money was divided evenly with every party member. Look, we got a lot of quests to do. Do we want to stand around in a swamp arguing about money a few feet from the town? Or we want to just divide it and move on? Surgery is like, all right, it's not like this on the rock. All right, I'll divide it with the people that contributed to this. Then come on. Uh, let's see. So, who contributed? I make your arguments to me. Oh, <laughs> Since Babs is gonna make a grab at the bag to try to just take it from, <laughs> from her. How heavy are 120 gold coins? Is this like. Uh, I mean, it's probably like two pounds. Oh, okay. Yep. Does Babs manage to get it? Uh, wow. Let's see. So I feel like uh, what's gonna need to happen here is an opposed agility roll. Um, Lurge, we are strength. you trying? Are you trying to dodge this? Lurge, we was asking people to stand in line and make their argument as to why they deserve 10 gold pieces. Okay, so Lurge, we isn't paying a lot of attention. You can like wrestle it away from him with strength or or you can uh, swipe it with agility. I wanna wrench it wrench it away. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> Given given that Lurgewi is surprised, he's yeah. he's taken by surprise. And uh, uh, is it is it Henley who's doing this? No, it was Babs. Babs. Henley yeah. is stuck on the rock. Babs is on of the course, shore. right? Yeah, Babs, uh, who has a lot of practice carrying a very heavy keg, um, just grabs the bag. What do you do with it, Babs? Babs starts just handing each person a hundred gold. Ten gold. Hundred. Ten gold. Ten gold. Yeah. There's yours. There's yours. Thank yours. you, Babs. You're very responsible. Of course. And <laughs> to anyone who doesn't want to be fair. <laughs> All right, everybody adds. So what? Lurjui doesn't get ten gold. No, you. Everyone gets ten, but okay. Lurjui gets it last. Uh, and he gets a raspberry at the same time. Yes. 
Lutri is really frustrated. No, I, Fine. I see what I'll never I, ever let you use my full arm again. <laughs> dude, don't be that way. No one likes a sore loser. And you didn't even lose. You made out on this. Um also uh Babs is holding Henley's ten and kind of looks out and is like, uh, anyone have any ideas of how to like uh get Henley back safely? Is the water still bubbling? Yep. I mean, simmering. jump for it, Henley. How far is it? 25 feet? Yeah, it's like 20 feet. Jump Fiona and swim. Swan puts dive. a hand on the, the trunk of one of the two trees that are crossed over, and she kind of gives it a pat. Is it a like a living or dead tree? Could we knock this over? Uh, um, roll your luck. And uh, 10 or higher is better. Oh, no. Um, this oh, tree, yeah. despite all appearances, is very much alive, hearty and hale. Uh, it, would, it would take serious felling in order to like make this tree fall over. But you could, if you had an ax, just like chop the tree down. Uh, Fiona says that aloud. Uh, she kind of whacks on the trunk of it and she goes, Oh, Henley, we could build you a bridge if we had an axe. Uh, I'm looks Henley. around the party. <laughs> Henley. Mm -hmm. I got a two-handed sword. Oh, oh Henley um, does not have an axe. Incidentally, being a new day, uh, those wizards of the party have reclaimed all previously cast spells. Mm. Um. Are the trees hanging over the rock? in such a way that Henley could reach any branches? Um, Henley roll luck. 10 plus is good. Oh, that was unexpected. You know, um, especially in combination with Fiona, like pushing on the tree and making it bend just a little bit, some of those branches start coming mighty close to in reach. It's gonna take a little agility check to see if you can jump up and grab them without falling into the water, but... <laughs> so Henley jumps and then Fiona leans back and the branches move just out of Henley's reach and Henley falls into the water. <laughs> mm. Oh we'll try no! To scrabble. Well, actually, like if, if Henley's already in the water, they're just gonna make a break for it. Swim for okay. it! Toward the shore. Swim yeah. for it! <laughs> Throw him a Henley rope! just starts sprinting. Um, are you just trying to move as fast as you can, Henley? Yeah, too sure. Okay. Mm -hmm -hmm. Go, Henley, go! Okay, give me a strength check, Henley, and let's see if you can, like, power your way through the water at speed. Jeez. I oh, Henley. Oh, Henley. All right, well, you're you're like power wading your way through this water as hard as you can. And the leeches are just flying. They're like leaping up out of the water yeah, all over the place. I hate this, ew. You take three attacks. <sighs> Goodbye, cruel world. That's one. <laughs> That's two. That's three. My AC is 10. Yes. So uh, you stagger up out of the water and three leeches hang from your limbs. It's um, not looking good for dear Henley. I, Babs will try to help Henley rip the leeches off as fast as possible. And mm -hmm, then Henley mm -hmm. will also be doing that. While okay. Scribbles is just recording what the leeches look like and anticipating being able to record their effects. Yeah. So, here's the deal. Henley's lost a lot of blood already. It's looking quite dire for our newest member of the party. Is there anything that anybody can do to prevent Henley's untimely death at the hands of the leeches. 
I have a magical healing lucky roll. Is that actually related to helping me heal? Is that possible? Um, I think that. Let's let's take a look. For who character? Which character? Uh, for Fiona. For Fiona the furnace. I think that what that means is that whenever you receive or perform magical healing, you add your luck bonus to the amount healed. Mm. But Fiona, being a forester, doesn't have any magical healing available. Hmm. Hmm. Could we, what if we run back to the city and seek some help? Oh, this is like Henley is fading within the next three seconds. Uh, 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 um, is it that he's losing blood? Yep. Could I enlarge his blood? <laughs> Could you enlarge his blood? <laughs> um, so let's take a look oh, no. at the enlarge spell, because if your enlarging would cause him to gain hit points, then the answer is yes. <gasps> yes. So here's the deal. If you hit a 20 to 23 on your spell check, then you'd give him plus 10 HP, and then he would be saved. They. So, like, not he. technically possible, but challenging, not achievable. Well, you got a 5% chance of doing that without burning stats. Well, uh, Henley just sacrificed so much for, uh, oh gosh, Agnes is the one doing this, and she's terrible, but we love them. We should, uh, we should actually, there's one thing that we should double check for Agnes, which is that um, you've reclaimed, you've regained some of the stats that you gave for, Ooh, yes. for spell burn. Ability scores is lost in this way, return as the wizard heals. Each day she does not attempt spell burn, she recovers one point of ability score. Okay, so actually, yesterday you spell burnt, so you didn't recover. Today you will recover a point, but you haven't done it yet. Okay, and I get to choose which uh, ability I get that point in. Yeah, and you'll you'll gain it tonight if you yeah. have not spell burnt all day. Got it. Okay, uh, and I have to spell burn in order for the enlarge spell to reach a useful number. Yes. Um, are there any clerics in the party? Nope. Mm -mm. Ooh. Well, We only have I one guess. cleric, and it's Grolopus. And no basic medicine that we could do, right? You know, I'd let you uh, make an argument that one of your characters has experience with medicine. Mm. Well... Fiona has an idea. Fiona's only ever saved animals that have wound up with leeches on them, but hmm. she does have an idea that the leech attaches and then sucks the blood out, and so the issue is that if he's losing blood, we could get the blood back in. So if she would instruct each person in the group to grab one of the leeches and squeeze it back in and then yank it off. <laughs> thus... <laughs> None of my characters are scientists. I'm I sorry. love it. Sky will but squeeze a leech. Arguably. That makes total sense. Yeah. <laughs> I think in real life, like that could work, but it also infects you and then you die from that. Yeah, yeah. It's very bad for you, actually. But, but... I think temporarily. <laughs> you know, if we're talking about work. death now or death in a week, right? Then mm -hmm. Maybe this is a reasonable I option. I like this. All right, all right. Um, um, so, Fiona. <laughs> Roll a d20 plus your intelligence. Oh no. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> have you have you all found that you forget how to swallow in isolation? Because I do. <laughs> I feel like I choke more now than I ever have before. Way more dangerous oh. now too. Oh. Drink oh. water. Rachel, yes, Rachel. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's what it cost me. I spell burned my ability to sip water yeah. <laughs> in exchange for. <laughs> All right. Fiona, the furnace, you coordinate the squeezing of the leeches. <laughs> this works. Henley, you only take one damage, which means you're left with one hit point. 
And we're definitely going to have to start getting some constitution rolls from you on subsequent mornings. So let's let's just make a note here. Henley has some skull attached to his character. Um, fantastic. Well done. Henley is they, not him. Ah, they. Well done. Yeah, as soon as we rip the leeches from Henley's body, Fiona, like, tackles them, and she's like, I'm so happy you're okay, you creepy little little chicken butcher. <laughs> oh, she, she gives them a little noogie. <laughs> <laughs> And Henley is resisting at first, but somehow the noogie calms them and they just kind of <laughs> <laughs> like um, they submit to being held. <laughs> Amazing. They wow, also all right. feel really sick, so they'll, they'll let themselves <laughs> be carried. The the 12 of you plus D'Artagnan and Chattanooga and Anna and Rachel stroll away uh, you know, not much the worse for wear, and with ten gold heavier in each of your coin pouches. All right, back to house today. <laughs> and that, I think, is where we should take our last five-minute break. And when we come back, we can begin the search in earnest for house today. Do 